Hey, hi. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear All you. All right, good. It means I did it right. Excuse me real quick. My coffee. How are you today? Sleepy. So I'm doing extra caffeine. <laughs> but so, otherwise, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So I had a chance to watch the film over the weekend. Um, uh, well, first of all, thank you. And I'm sorry, or I'm not sure. <laughs> that, that's what I was going to say. The question I was going to say, the first question I want to throw out there is, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> perfect. I'm going to quote you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a lot of times, I, this is something that I feel like, it, I don't want to give away where the smoke goes. I know, goes. it's so hard to talk about it because, you know, it, the first thing and obvious, the biggest elephant in the room is, you know, the finale of the movie and right. you can't say anything about it. So it's been like this fun dance of like, how can we have a whole chat about this movie without actually spoiling it for anyone? So let's see if we can do it. Ready? Go. Well, I'll try. So I will <laughs> say this, like this is definitely not a movie for the faint of heart. This is not something that I would recommend to a casual, somebody who likes more of what you would call a thriller than a straight horror film. Um, that, and that's Why not? not? Like, you don't want to traumatize people? <laughs> Come on. But and actually, they, so the, I have a question for you before you yes. start. Um, my yes. favorite thing so far has been like every time I've done an interview, they're like, so I was trying to figure out who to recommend this to. And then there's like. I, that's what I was going to get to. So, I have so it. Who, I, who do you recommend this? Is this <laughs> I do. So th this is a movie that goes very far, but it's also something that is deeply rooted in character. This is yeah. really a character piece. This is a dramatic based film. I think the inter uh, the interactions between this father and her and his daughter are really at the core of this film. And it what it's what makes this a tragedy in the end of what happens, not to give it away again. So I think that if you want something that is more deeply rooted in humanity, but also something that shows the extremes of what humanity can be, I think that that's a film for you. How does Perfectly that sound? said. That okay. was really beautifully done actually. Yeah. I, that might be my favorite answer I've gotten so far. That's the that, that's the thing. This is a movie that I, um, I, I, I it actively got under my skin to where I'm watching this at home and I got up and started pacing in the living room. I watch a lot of things and not, this really got to me. Like the dad in me was deeply affected by this. So, so congratulations. You I was going to say, um, so maybe that I had some some mainstream reviews where um, the feedback was similar, but they meant it as an insult. And I just take that as an absolute, like the ultimate compliment because um, this movie, first of all, especially the finale part, um, it is inspired by a true story. That is that is a true story. I and wasn't so, sure. It says it at the beginning, but I didn't know if that was just uh, a, Yeah, so that's, okay. that's what I wanted to... to to stress is some people were like, why did you go that route with it? Well, the answer is because that's the true story. Um, that's really what happened. And when I first signed on to this, there was a lot of talk um, on with the team and with me about how far we wanted to take it or not. And um, ultimately we all decided that we really just needed to go for it because um, this kind of subject matter, you know, the humanity behind it. I think it's important if you're going to tell this story that you do go there with it, because if we don't horrify or offend or traumatize the audience in some fashion with this kind of material, then we didn't do our job because this should be horrifying. It should be disturbing. Um, it should stay with you. And so, um, so that's really, you know, when, when we get that kind of feedback now on the film, I, I actually feel relief because I'm like, okay, we did our job. Because if someone, if when someone watched the end of that and was like, came away, and eh, that was fine. Either there's really something wrong with you, or <laughs> we didn't do our job. I, I don't believe that person. I think that they checked <laughs> out before they actually got there. They didn't stick with it because, it, at the very least, you're gonna. There's no way you can't have a big reaction to this. It's just impossible. And even it, no, no, no. Yeah, so, and that's the I, other thing too. Is you know, I'm I'm a horror chick, so. Um, yeah. I, you know, when I, when I tell stories now, there's a lot of material out there. There's a lot of movies out there, there's a lot of trends. And okay. so, especially with horror fans, they get desensitized. They start to be able to be like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Or, and there's nothing worse than that. When you're trying to like lose yourself in a story and go on a ride for an hour and a half, there's nothing worse than being able to anticipate every step of the way. Then you can't, you can't really enjoy it. 
So for me, I really try to target material and stories and characters where um, we can take the audience one direction and then completely turn it on its head. And and we can surprise them. You know, you don't see this ending coming. Um, I think now there's enough talk about it where people are bracing themselves for something intense to happen, but so far no one has pinpointed that this is the direction that was gonna go, so. If I watch a lot of horror, and right. like you said, I I didn't see this one coming at all. Like I did not see the, the, where this was heading. And it's that thing that I'm always looking for. And it's um, something that my wife is like, I, I watch too many movies and I need to find like the most out there shit to like get me off now at this point in my life. But it's just- It might be for us. <laughs> and so I, I watch it, but it's like, oh no, you actually got what you asked for. And I'm not sure if it's what I needed, but it's, it's, but it's something Fair. that I was really Fair. impressed by. And it's something that I, I think that the, the storytelling is so compelling. The acting is so on point. The cinematography is so good. The, the music is fantastic in this thing. It's firing on all cylinders to where it's deeply impactful. I would have, I felt no, which there's a fine line here where you can, it, I didn't feel meanness. I didn't feel like the, the this, there was no cynicism in the making of this film. And I think if it would have had that, then it would have been just, it would have been pointless. Yeah, I agree completely. And that was, um, walking that very fine line was was really crucial um and and something that the whole team was um really trying to stay on the right side of so i'm i'm actually very glad that you brought that up because even though the intention is to push comfortability a little bit with this this story and and really get under your skin a bit it's not to be um an exploitive kind of way and don't get me wrong um as a genre fan I like exploitation. I've done exploitation, um, but this is not that story. And so it was very important to tonally get it right. Um, and I, I feel confident in what we were able to come up with. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that one of the big things that you do here that it, it was a surprise to me is how physical your performance is. Um, yeah. That this is like, you're, you're literally trapped in a car for 70% of the movie and you're in one half of a car. <laughs> Yes. Of that. So you're in one seat and this is an incredibly physical performance. I think that the way that you're holding yourself, carrying yourself, the way that you move in this, it, it just really does so much for supporting your performance here. Can you talk about the physicality of this? Yes, absolutely. So, um, uh, fun fact, I actually was pregnant. When was one of the it. questions I had and yes. you, you played it. So I, I was like, there's no way it never looks this good. It right. never looks this right. The way you're walking and everything, they, well, thank they, you. Yes. They never do. Very, so sorry. Yes. Very walkie friendly. <laughs> yes. You never want to insult somebody at the same time. You're it's like, like, oh, no. So, <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was just bloated that day. And no, I uh, I was six and nine months pregnant when we shot oh this. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, and so uh, because you're you follow horror movies, I can talk a little more about this. I've been doing sure. some mainstream press, too. So I'm trying to dance around it a little bit. But this one I can get it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, I as a horror fan, you know, you know, you like things to be as practical as possible. No CGI, no augmentation. And so um, they brought me this story. Uh, in fact, the, the executive producer, James Cullen Brassic, um, he was working a deal with the distributor of Cleopatra Records, and they like to tell true stories. So um, he was kind of scouring the internet for interesting material, and he came across, across this particular article. So to pitch me on the movie, he literally just texted me an article and was like, you down. And... I like the most disturbing, intense, weird shit out there. So yeah. like normally the answer immediately would have been yes. But I had to think about it because um, it was the height of COVID. And um, I had actually already shot four or five movies during that time. And I was starting oh. to show. And so I was like, I, you know, you know, from being, you know, a movie fan and, and, and someone who works obviously within this, um, there's not a lot of very pregnant women on camera you don't see it like for all these movements about you know representation and such you don't see pregnant chicks on screen especially on a lead role it just doesn't happen um and I thought about that so I was like I don't know if I should do it and then I thought about it and I was like that's exactly why I should do it um actually because yep. it's something fresh you know fans don't get to see that and women you know we're 50 percent of the population and a 
large amount of them will have have pregnancies and 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 you should be able to see that on screen so unfortunately it's this kind of a story that you see on screen but you know it still it counts and so I was like, all right, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it now and not when I'm going to have a, you know, a fake pregnant belly in there. It has to be, it has to be real in order for it to make sense. And so I did a little like bracing myself and I was like, all right, I'm going to do it because, um, you know, I don't know if you have children. Um, I have two. Yeah, okay. Two yeah. So then, then, then you probably have seen the process of how it happens. And when you get very pregnant, um, it, it takes a lot out of you. Yes. It's very, very hard to do certain things. And so um, this movie was extra challenging in that I couldn't get to a point where I wasn't feeling so great and then just take a break for a while and regroup. Most of the movie is me. There was no one else to kick the box to for a minute and like shoot a different scene. It was all me. So um, there weren't really breaks. There was not really an opportunity, you know, and on a contained budget. Uh, which this had because, um, you know, during the pandemic, people didn't know what was going to happen with movies and TV. Everyone was afraid to green light stuff, let alone spend money, real money right. on it, because we didn't know if it was ever going to come back. You know what I mean? At that point, and we were the height of lockdowns. So um, so it was just a little bit of a budget to, to make it happen. And um, so we really didn't even have time to to take our time with it. We shot 12 hour days. Oh and um, yeah, and and we shot in all the elements. There was there was golf ball size hail. Uh, there was really snow. It was really the middle of winter. Um, we really shut the car off and didn't have heat for most oh of it God. because because sound you couldn't yeah. do it. You know what yeah, I mean? So uh, all those those sticks and and glass and everything and that's all really there. So um, I knew but if I lived through this movie, it was going to be very believable. <laughs> Well, I think that... my team was great. They 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 watched me the whole time. They made sure I ate and stay hydrated. They would like in between the camera setups, they were like rubbing me down and blowing the heaters on me. So um, my team really looked out for me while we were filming. But it was a really hard physical shoot, emotionally, physically. It just was draining. Um, I was constantly wanting to just kind of get into it and do my thing, and then I would feel the baby like freak out and have to stop and. And I'm like, I don't want this to be a true story for real, true story. So um, it was just hard. And um, probably your wife will tell you this too, or your girlfriend, I'm sorry, I don't know. My wife. I'm, okay. Yeah. Uh, probably your wife will tell you uh, the kind of cardinal rule is don't look up any birth stuff until you're right up on it. Um, so I had not watched any birthing videos, but I, I was literally- This was your first? This is my first and only child, yes. Uh, you know <laughs> I had no idea what I was in for. none like yeah, yeah no. true no now if I was gonna have a second I'm not gonna have a second but if I was going to I would absolutely know not to film very pregnant but I was like you know dumb first time like yeah, it'll be, what could go wrong so yeah so I I had not watched any birthing videos at that point um but I was about to do the scenes where where that was supposed to start happening and um, so it was a lunch break and I went and I, I turned on YouTube so I could watch and see how to accurately portray. And I came back and I was like, I'll just stay pregnant forever. Like, I don't yeah. need to, see it. it'll be fine. We'll just, I'll just rock. We'll, she'll stay in there. You know, she'll go to college, whatever. And I was so being scared. I don't know if I can swear on this. I was you, so... you can swear, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking scared and I so that like my portrayal on that was real because I was like oh my god and there's no escaping this is totally about to happen oh no so then then I had to make sure I didn't get too upset so I didn't really go into labor yeah. and then we wouldn't finish the film oh my god what a mess so um not recommended filming super pregnant but but in this case we did do it oh and baby's fine she we had good it. good we actually brought her to the premiere to prove to everyone that <laughs> It worked out. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's it, I, the thing that about both times my wife was pregnant, um, especially at that six month mark, it was basically, it was coma time. 
Yes. It was, I, I, I had that, the one advantage of that time was I could just watch anything I wanted. I didn't have to think <laughs> about, there was no approval process of putting on something. It was just, okay. I yeah. didn't care what anyone else was doing. Oh. Yeah. Your wife probably did not give a shit. No, it was, thir- it was 30 seconds of whatever garbage she wanted to watch. And then it was back to the normal garbage <laughs> that I like. So it, it was an amazing time. <laughs> But the um, glad it was great for you. That part. I want to talk to her. I'm going to show you. It's hard. hard. It's so hard. But like the the thing is, if they're those birthing videos, they should really just do it from the head up and see it right there because it's it's a totally different thing. Like seeing those. Traumatic. Oh my god. Yeah. Like when you see it and it's your kid that's coming out, it's like there's this weird thing that happens where there's this alien intruder that's fucking with my wife and I'm so mad at it. And I'm just like, <laughs> get this thing out of her. It's hurting her. Then the, the child comes out and you see the kid and you go, okay, give me the kid, whatever. We'll, 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 we'll figure her out later. And it's just like this, <laughs> this switch goes on in your mind and you're immediately like, I, this is the thing I have to protect and make sure it's okay yes. um, for, you know, I'm, I don't think that I'm ready for this kind of this instinct that kicks in. And it's right? such Every cliche is true about how beautiful, that's, that's wonderful, so, and amazing it is. Yes, yes. And like, I, prior to this, I hated kids. I thought they're so annoying and want, I'm like, eh. Even in my horror movies, I'm like, why are you ruining this movie with a kid? Like, and everybody always told me when it's yours, when it happens to you, it's going to, like, all these wonderful things happen. And I was like, sure, cool. And you're so right. It's so funny. And like, to go full circle back to talk about Frost, it's, the primal instincts with nature and yeah. and what really kicks in in certain scenarios including you know childbirth and 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 reproducing it's so out of your control it's so overwhelming it's so all encompassing and you know dare i even say it's, it's it's beautiful it's really it does change everything it's absolutely yeah it's i mean there's literally tens of millions of years of things in your dna that are hardwired in there to make you love this and there's also yeah. something that happens that like five years later you forget how much it sucked and you think about doing it again it's like it's this whole don't sucking. tell me that <laughs> no i was convinced i was one and done so that, that's all i'll leave <laughs> no. it to that so. that's it end the interview and end, end it uh, well you know but, what if i get pregnant again i'm coming on here just to yell at you just just so you know no, oh, no, please. Totally your fault. But all of, I gave you fair warning. So <laughs> if, if in two years from now you're at that place and you're like, yeah, I'm thinking about it's like, yeah, yeah, there you go. Welcome. I'm gonna think of you first. It won't be my husband, it won't be my family. I'll be like, God, damn it, he was right. <laughs> oh. Okay. So holy, then, holy, hopefully we're one and done. Yeah. Well, I mean, who knows? As long as that's the only thing is I don't recommend it to anybody that's not into it it's i would never push it on anybody it's, there's enough, it, there's, there's so enough much that goes that into like it. it yeah yeah i want to that's the thing is i i feel very confident that i can juggle what i do and and um i'm i'm so obsessed with my daughter and Good. um and you know i really have lots of love and attention from super hands on with her so um i just i can't imagine being able to split that time and still do the kind of job that i want to do both as a mom and this so that's that's my hesitation more than anything but we'll see maybe we'll be back for frost too who knows um yeah i i, I was going to start coming up with subtitles but i feel like oh there you go there's one of them right there hi, hi. this this is jacob he's a six-year-old everything okay buddy hi and who are you talking to this is devaney she's an actress she hi. was in a movie called frost that i just watched over the weekend right I'm we're not going to watch that for a while now yeah <laughs> okay i'll be out there in just a few nice minutes to meet okay, you. Buddy? Bye. That happens every once in a while. That's okay. I, I'm, I'm running a real tight ship over here. No, uh, oh, it's so. so funny. I um, I'm juggling. Uh, my mine is now one, and she just started walking, so she's all over. It was great prior to this. I could just like plop her down, and we're good. But yeah, she started walking in and out, and she wants to push all the buttons on the keys. So um, so she was taken to the park to go play while I'm doing the press tour today. <laughs> So I absolutely get it. And he's really cute, by the way. Thank you. Um, yeah. One is the scariest time for me. That's the that's when they start moving around. And it's the it's Definitely. like you can put them on the floor before then. And they're just they'll right. stay and you there. Just sit they might and roll. Sit there and go away and come back. She's still sitting there. No, no. They are. In de- and it happens so fast. Like literally one day, she was just off and running. It was ridiculous. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's, uh, sorry. But, okay. <laughs> so to, this, yes. to, to pull it back to the. 
for yeah. this film. It's something that I the casting here is so perfect. The interaction that you wouldn't really I would never have thought of you and Vernon as your dad. It just wouldn't make right. sense to me. But yeah. like it actually really did work. And I think that that relationship, it's the only relationship in the film that mostly that we see. So I yeah. think that it's really important to make that work in a very small window of time. And it absolutely works. It it had it had to work or else the film wasn't gonna work. And yeah. um we actually there was like a list of names of people to to play that role. And ultimately, um was really, really pushing for and glad that it ended up being Vernon. Um, I've known Vernon for a very long time now. Um, we used to do conventions together, signings and stuff. Yeah. yeah and um, and we've been in a ton of movies together, but it's always been like, I come out for a cameo for a day, he comes out for a cameo for a day, and yep. like we have a couple lines and that's it. And so we've never had the opportunity to really dive into something. And so, um, and he also doesn't get to play super dramatic roles very often. So when, and, and that's a shame because he's right? so good. He's so good. Yeah. Um, I, that's why I was really adamant. Like, and that was a, one of the great things about, about this movie in Frost. It was because, um, because all bets were off with COVID, it really gave us an opportunity to, um, think outside the box and try things we normally wouldn't try and, and cast people we normally wouldn't cast for this. And, um, there's so many actors that kind of get pigeonholed into one thing or to just sure. come and to do a little, you know, Vernon's a very prolific actor. So he gets, you know, name dropped into a variety of movies all the time and they don't really take advantage of how talented he is. And so with this, we, when he read it, he was like, you know, it was a really tiny budget and a really contained ambitious film, but he immediately was like, yes, because it was something that he doesn't get to do very often. And he really wanted to tell this story and show this character and the dynamic. And, you know, we had great chemistry from being friends for so long. And um, it really, I felt strongly that it would work um, energy wise on camera. And Brandon, Brandon Sickle, the director, he uh, really knows, cause he's worked with both of us before a variety of times. Um, actually Vernon's in this one too, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, <laughs> really knew how to get the most out of us quickly. And um, and so I think that that was really um, crucial to making sure the film happened the way it needed to. Oh, agreed. And it's, it's that thing that we were talking about before, that if these performances aren't working, if this relationship doesn't work, then it just becomes, um, it co becomes very mean-spirited, the yes. film. And it's yeah. something that is, it's not, which is something that I've been thinking about this film you know, caught like once every couple hours for the last few days, it just, it's going to simmer in the back of my, no, 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 that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Look, I, yeah. any film that can leave its mark on me, that's something that I'm really happy about. Now, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I'm, my 12 year old is just getting into horror films. This is one that I'm definitely going to put higher up on the shelf. I was going to say. He needs to find this one yeah. anytime soon. Like, and, and there's some pretty dark stuff that he's, you know, that he's totally fine with watching. I don't, I don't know if we're quite ready for this one yet though, but that's, I, I, that's something I actually audience. really want to talk about. I, I, I love all different kinds of subgenres, um, and I try to do something for everyone within them. And this, this is something that you know, if you think about overall, like in horror, like you let, like you said, you, you're a twelve year old watch a lot of horror. I think it's easier to separate reality and fiction when it's like a larger than life boogeyman. You yep. know what I mean? Then, it, then I think it's easier to show kids and explain. You know they're not really coming after you. They live in this land and it's easy to draw those lines, those hard lines. And in this film, I think, you know, even though it's pretty contained and it's kind of a small story, it it has that impact because it is it is so personal. It is so, you know, it did happen, it, you know? So I think that that is really um, what makes it top shelf worthy. I'm gonna actually quote you on yeah. that one, yeah. And it's and and that's what I I think that it's this is the type of thing that I I would highly recommend to the right people um, because I think that it's somebody that's really that does want something that's gonna it's gonna shock them something that will actually that'll you know kick their ass a little bit but it's something that will be in the best way that it is something that does, you will be left thinking about this and but if you want something that's cookie cutter you can walk away from it I mean you know like I, I saw Smile and I saw Barbarian this weekend and those are both great fun yes. like, big bombastic movies love both of them quite a yeah. bit but at the end I'm not thinking about those afterwards they didn't get under my skin like this one did and so you're, you're definitely having an impact like the big boys are so um, congratulations on that you did something thank really special thank you I appreciate that 
what is coming next, what's coming down the pike, because I, I hope you have not more of this exact film, but more of these <laughs> human-based stories, because I think you can definitely pull it off. Well, thank you. Yeah, I um, I mean, if you like human-based stories, um, I have a couple others that I, I highly suggest uh, from previous works. I, I did a Charles Manson biopic called House of Manson. I have not watched that, but I saw that on your IMDb. And I, I definitely- hi, if you like this, um, it this is similar in tone. Okay. Um, it, it's the first film to showcase Charles Manson's uh, childhood and early life and upbringing, as well oh, as wow. the murders. Yes. And um, and the general consensus there from the reviews were that we really humanized these people that were previously perceived as boogeymen. Um, and even though you know the events of what happened, uh, our, that film really um, makes it personal. So if you like kind of the tone of this, the, I, I highly suggest um, watching that one. Um, as far as future works, what I have out coming next is um, uh, a little little bit different. It's a World War II epic called Battle for Saipan. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, and that has uh, Casper Van Dien, and Louis Mandalore, and Jeff Fahey. And it's coming out through Saban and Paramount uh, November 25th, gets a, a limited theatrical, and then the 29th gets uh, the release. Congratulations. And- that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, we. I mean, again, this this team is really fantastic. It's the same director, uh, Brandon okay. Nagel, and um, it's it was back to the big budget. These were uh, movies that we shot in Thailand, um, uh, the first of a couple of those. So that that will be the next release we have. Um, and I also have uh, a lighter movie, <laughs> a uh, creature creature feature. <laughs> I, yeah. would, I would assume well, so dark, it would be so, lighter. Yeah, no, it's it's more of a it's not lighter. It's still a horror movie, but it's a popcorn yeah. horror movie um, about a giant storm that comes in and floods a precinct in a small town in Louisiana, and in the flooding is alligators. Nice. And so it's yeah, it's a bunch of inmates and uh, and a gator. I I'm know. I'm all on board for that. I, I yeah. yeah, I mean, I have the Shout Factory alligator that I just picked up a couple weeks yeah. ago. So yeah, I'm. That's, those are, I, I love it all. I, yeah, like, it's super fun. It, I'm a genre kid, so that's really in my heart. It's in all, it's many, in the whole rainbow of it. You know, the pretentious high-minded stuff to the dirtiest, <laughs> lowest guttural, just I exploitation garbage. So, there. So. so we're kindred, so yeah. we we're going to be talking more. Yeah, I would love to come back and talk to you about uh, Battle for Saipan and The Flood. Um, they have the same publicist, I believe, as this one. So we might oh, actually, yeah. Okay, so October Coast is handling this. October also? Coast is handling some of those, um, as well as uh, a Paramount, I think, has their own people too. But I believe yep. October Coast is also doing um, doing some some press on this. So uh, I love to come back sure and chat more yes, with you. <laughs> please, I will hold you to that. I will make sure that happens again. Very cool. Thank you so awesome. much for having me. No, thank you for joining me. It was great to chat with you. And yeah. this is, oh. uh, congratulations on the film. So, there, Frost. It, you, wait, you got the vinyl for I that? I got the vinyl. I, sorry, I just remembered I was supposed to plug that. So it came out on vinyl. It's available <sighs> now, uh, the soundtrack for Frost. And uh, the movie itself comes out October 11th. And it's on, uh, if you buy the Blu-ray, it comes with a bonus CD of the soundtrack too. I have the Blu-ray with the bonus Yay! CD. And I haven't I haven't heard Frontline Assembly since high school. So that was a- Right? That, this, I, yeah. So Brandon's a huge fan of theirs too. So when that was part of the appeal of uh, having Cleopatra as a distributor is like, we got access to all these awesome musicians for the music, so. It's great. Really this, cool. The, the yeah. soundtrack is a lot of fun. So Thank yeah. Thank you. Thanks yeah. so much. Okay. Well, thank you Can't again. Get on to the next. I wish I could. I, know, I love I talking to you, but we'll just do it again. That's it. Please take okay. care. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>